Hello. To me. Oh. <laughs> Hello. We've, we've, we've started. Hello. Hello, Owen. How are you doing? Hey, I'm and good. Would you would you like to introduce yourself, Rachel? Um. Yes, I am Rachel Long. I'm a poet. Brilliant. <laughs> so, Rachel, you um, you've recently released your your first collection, and and that's kind of what we we're going to start off by talking about. Um, what's really interesting for me, I've I've never had uh, a collection, so what's what I find really interesting is the process of how how do you put that together, how do you decide the order that those poems sit in, how do you decide what's in the collection. Hmm. Um, that's a really good question. Um, I'd say, first of all, time. Give it time. Um, maybe don't start with the fact that you want it to be the collection. Start with the poems and let the poems lead you uh, into what they are shaping up to be and how they want to be together. Uh, rather than the other way around, which is to be like, I want this collection to be about dogs. And then that means that if you then write about a Georgia O'Keeffe painting that isn't a, a dog, because I don't think she painted a dog ever, then you might be like, ah, this is getting on my nerves. So let the poems lead you. And what you might find, I suspect you might find what I found, is that you um, have these really interesting um, intersections that actually perhaps um, a dog poem in between a painting poem speak really, uh, really well to each other when they're sitting side by side. Um, which brings me to your order um, and your, your kind of the aspect of your question about order and ordering a, your collection, um, which is another difficult thing to do. Um, when I was on a, uh, a mentorship scheme and I was lucky enough to work with uh, the poet Caroline Bird for a whole year, um, basically writing poems in bed at 3am and I could send them to someone. Obviously, I didn't expect a response at 4am, but I, I could send them out and that was such an important time really for me, like uh, for writing and accelerating my writing and my practice. Um, but Caroline said in that year, and it was really helpful, and, and I didn't then kind of have the finished collection for another sort of five years, and that's, I say that in terms of like, that can sometimes be the amount of time that you're kind of looking at, and I wouldn't be in a rush, I'm a big believer in taking the time that the work needs. To go back again. Um, so Caroline said, um, when you think, when you suspect, and your poems are telling you, I do, I think this is a collection, I think I've got you know, and it's not just about hitting 30 or 40 poems and then being like, okay, um, it is that kind of, but then it's also about, yeah, how how they're speaking to each other um, and whether you're excited to put them together. Anyway, she said to me, print them all out, lay them all out on your floor, um, put them in the order that you think they go in right now. And that might be a chronological order. You might be writing um, a book about, I don't know, growing up or girlhood and they might happen chronologically uh, or, or anti-chronologically. Is that a word? Reverse chronology? Reverse? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, lay them all out, print them out, lay them all out on the floor and then kind of do a, like a, you can start to, from a bird's eye point of view almost, see how these poems are talking to each other. Um, and she uh, advised, taught me to do a really, um, I think an exciting thing, which is how about you put two poems that are absolutely on the, whatever you think is maybe the opposite end of, of the chronology of how, how or what the poems are about. So for example, you have a poem about falling in love next to the poem about, uh, the divorce, or maybe that's even too convenient. Maybe you have the poem about falling in love next to the poem about the pot plant that has just died. And how you can make these really um, 
interest okay yeah that that would be a better that because that would be maybe an image about the breakdown of love the dead pot plant rather than having the one about I don't know getting the divorce papers in the post next to each other basically you can play and when they're all laid out it becomes like this really interesting playground and so that's what I did but again for a really like extended amount of time sometimes you think that the order that they're in is the right order and then it doesn't work um, or there's there's certain poems that jar against each other rather than popping off against each other. Yeah. Basically, it's like going to your wardrobe and trying on find trying to find your best outfit. So out of all your clothes, there'll be some things that clash, and you're like, no, and some things that clash, but you're like, hmm, it could work. I don't know, but it's like that, but just with your. <laughs> I really like that. I really like that uh, that description of it being like an outfit, and that you've got to put it together in the right way, and the and the right layering, and the right order to it makes makes it make sense um I'm, i remember jacob sandra rose saying that if you've got 12 poems in a collection the collection is the 13th poem hmm. now, the order of them is as important as each of them on their own um i've been reading your collection and i think my question for you is um what are you reading what should i read hmm. when i finish reading this um nice one of my favorite questions. I have just uh, finished uh, Holly Pester's uh, debut collection, Comic Timing, which is, I think, incredible. I think the way in which she writes the body um, and how basically it's hilarious and the saddest, one of the saddest things as well that we have to lumber around in this life till the end of it. Um, I heard her read at the forwards a couple of years ago and I was just like I cannot wait for this collection and I love that I love that I love that space before someone has got a collection you just cannot wait until it is on the page and then yeah it only came out at the beginning of this month and then finally I, I could hold that poem that meant so much to me when I heard it and I could kind of trace it and that was um yeah it's really special thing for me I suppose and the whole collection is brilliant as well it wasn't just like that one poem that I loved um either so I've just read in Holly I've just finished Holly Pester's comic timing I have also just finished Max Porter's The Death of Francis Bacon which is um him taking five Francis Bacon paintings and writing into them or from the perspective of them. It's a super surreal piece of work. And I, I mention it too, you said collections, but I, I'm, I mention it because I do think it's really important and it can also be really exciting for us as poets to read obviously like multi-genre and to, yeah, what, what reading a surreal piece of work that writes into a painting or from the perspective or from inside of a, of a painting can how that will then manifest perhaps in in the work that I go on to write or where I can go with it that's interesting I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that I've not read that myself yeah um all right Rachel that's all the questions do you have a uh, a writing exercise for us yes okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so now I don't um I'm exhausted from answering questions um I do um it is something that uh, that we have just done this evening. I say we, um, Apples and Snakes, put on an amazing workshop for, I think, kind of 60, 90. I don't know how many people were there, but they were all brilliant. Um, and I, this was one of their tasks. So I, uh, I pose it to you. I challenge you with it too, um, which is to think of a TV character that you despise. You don't have to know why you despise them. You 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 can you can just um, and I challenge them. I challenge you to write an absolute whole page um, or whole one kind of electric word document of a rant about how much you hate them. Think about it almost in terms of that you're writing it towards someone else as well. So you're using all the tropes of a rant as well. Like, add another thing. And I've told you once before, and I'll tell you this as well, that whole kind of the, the, the language that we use when we're ranting. Um, a, a whole page, go on and on when you feel like you have nothing to rant about, rant further, 
find something and it has to be about the character. And then once you finish your page, um, then use your TV character as a vehicle to write about love. And you can completely swerve really fast into love and you might not know you probably won't know as you're ranting how you're going to get to love and that's fine we never know how we're going to get to love we just kind of believe it might happen <laughs> perhaps um or, or not uh, but rant love using your tv character that you hate and it's inspired by a Hera Lindsay Bird poem called Monica in which she rants about Monica Geller for about a page. And then um, she has the line, I wrote it down earlier. I fell in love with a friend once because obviously Monica Geller is from the popular sitcom Friends. Um, so she uses that opening, that portal in her hatred of Monica to write about love. And I think it's a really, um, I think it's a really excited writing exercise. Um, and it can be, it can be quite fun, I think. Amazing. Um, Rachel, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Julia. See you again very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.